to you. Very, very warm welcome, mon français n'est pas très bien, s'il vous plaît, but he's going to talk to you in real French, because I only speak the down the street stuff, you know. Martin O'Brien, please. <laughs> Before I begin, I would like, first of all, to say that I particularly was drawn by the idea of reading um, and uh, making a protest about the situation that's going on in Syria. I have to say that unlike the Vatican, who had Mugabe present at the elevation of John Paul II, at least the royal family in England had the decency to withdraw the invitation from the Syrian dictator to the royal wedding, which I do admire. So, um, because it's such a special occasion, I have um, one poem that I have written myself for the occasion, and one poem, both on the theme of liberty or freedom, by the French poet Paul Eluard. Uh, <clears throat> this is what I felt about the concept of freedom in the context of what's happening to people like uh, Talal Maluki in Syria. I've given it a Latin title because I feel this is a symbolism for a universal protest at what's going on there and Latin is somewhat considered to be a universal language. So the title is Et nunc libertas facta est, which means and now Freedom has been made, or is made, I should say. Freedom is a myth, most definitely not free. Liberté, liberty, liberty, illusion, delusion, confusion, revolution, persistent perplexity. The light followed, mesmerizes mangled minds, turns, twists, entwines the lost beaten soul until freedom ensnares it, dazzles it, misleads it. Who, craving a true existence, decides whose freedom takes precedence over others? What use equality, that French égalité, in whose bosom the ex-colonized are smothered by rhetoric? That rhetoric of brotherhood, treacherous, controlling, represses the thinkers and dupes through collusion, the deluded colluded, and crushes the spirit toward compromised confraternity. Freedom is singular, fixed within, a fixation existential, respected, a bequest, et nunc libertas facta est. about uh, the, the, the desire for freedom during the German occupation of France. In 1942, he wrote this poem. Uh, he's very famous for writing about very deep and complex ideas using very simple language and imagery. And also, the concept in this poem is showing you resistance or desire to everyday little things. Now, I'll read a little bit of it for you in French, and then I'll move into the translation of it. Sur mes cahiers des colliers, sur mon pupitre et les arbres, sur le sable et la neige, j'écris ton nom. Sur toutes les pages lues, sur toutes les pages blanches, pierre, sang, papier ou cendre, j'écris ton nom. Sur la jungle et le désert, sur les nids et sur les genêts, sur l'écho de mon enfance, j'écris ton nom. And on a close. In English, on my school books, on my desk and trees, 
on the sand and snow, I write your name. On all pages red, on all white pages, stone, sand, paper, or ashes, I write your name. On the jungle and desert, on the nests and gorses, on the echo of my childhood, I write your name. On the marvels of nights, on the white bread of days, on the married seasons, I write your name. On the fields on the horizon, on the wings of birds, and on the mill of shadows, I write your name. On each puff of dawn, on the sea, on the boats, on the dimensional mountain, I write your name. On health regained, on risk that is no more, on hope without memories, I write your name. And by the strength of one word, I start over my life. I was born to know you, to name you, liberty. Is Leach Gahanger at the arrangement of saying that my contribution is bilingual? Is Gralum Pain on Goyega or John the Pain? August Fordini Moss or San Sirshan Mahera? August Candice Norodi is small, a hood of their doing. Now, or John the Pain, August Sirshan Gong on the Goyling Allowed. August Shinapa. Um, I have chosen to speak uh, to read in Irish and to, to speak in Irish first because not only do I have a great love for deep love for the Irish language, but I think that when we think of freedom, the freedom to speak one's own language must be one of the greatest cultural gifts of all. If you have known at the time when that language was forbidden you, and when the power occupying and running our country tried to stifle and kill that <coughs> language. And it's one of the things for which I am grateful to our patriots. For that reason, I have chosen to read a poem by one of the leaders of the 1916 Rising, Patrick Pierce. And uh, I have chosen it, I think, because of the sincerity of the sacrifice for our freedom, which is embodied in a very simple poem, covered which lot of you learned in school. I was on Don Shinno, Fern up the Honako. I was in Sundon, Swinian and Pearsach, Ervan Olig, I was Shin and Symbol at Hawaii. The Aaron, Roshindo, Van Orling, Agus Nimordo, a fool of which, a ruddy oiler and sail, or Toshe, con an fear ebert the inn of Chishin, Trid er son of Heron, Agus Tos a oil er son of Heron. Furnock the Honoko, the Podrick my Pierce. Furnock the Honoko, a oil in a hoile, is the goddess Mohuil, er outlook of Stormy. The Cholus the Kyol, a vin in the Bina, is the Cholus Machluus, an ugly good shape. The blushes the veil, a vilch in the Milsha, is the Cholus Machri, an ugly Mavilta. The Gallus Mahuil is the Cholus the Hunus, the Cholus Machri is the Vian the Hocus. The Hocus Machul, er an Ashton the Hummus, is there on road so roam might the hugus? The hugus mugnuish, er on road so roam, er on miniab the heen, is there on moss the yod. And I read an English version of it. I have previously done a translation, but I didn't have it to hand, so I did a fairly quick translation uh, this evening. And just to say that in translating it, and um, I use Hiberno English so that it is close to the Irish of <coughs> Pierce and I've written it in the structure, rhyme scheme and language of Irish syllabic poetry echoing 
the assonance and internal rhyme and the music of the long ball sound hopefully of the original poem. Naked I saw thee, O beauty of beauties, and I blinded my eyes in face of red staring. I heard your sweet music, most dulcet your tones pure. I blocked fast my ears, I feared the spell of your music. I tasted your lips, O sweetness past sweetness, and I hardened my heart, lest sweet tasting destroyed me. I blinded my eyes and blocked fast my hearing, then hardened my heart, but my desire soundly smothered. I focused my face fast on the road that I'd chosen, on that deed now envisioned, on that death I had faced fast. And that for me is the ideal of the patriot who's prepared to sacrifice for the freedom of his people. And um, I just want to be associated very specially uh, with Yasser's endeavors to bring the horror, but also the ideals and the greatness of Syria to us. And uh, he's somebody I admire, I regard as a good friend, and I hope Syria will prosper. <coughs> And our next guest, please, ladies and gentlemen, give it we give you a very, very warm welcome, please, to Kate Hennessy. Thoughts about the momentous events which are now happening in that most beautiful part of the world, the whole Middle East, which is the cradle of all our civilization. It's, I've written this, these few words for Yasser Helen, my friend. Sirsha, Horia, freedom for Syria and all the Middle East. In blue and white Tunisia, that tourist paradise, you, jobless, hopeless, humiliated, took action last December. Little did you know, Mohammed was easy, that when you set yourself up a light, you set the Middle East on fire, with dreams of freedom, equality, democracy. Inspired by your sacrifice, one by one they arose, the Arab peoples, like a tsunami. In Egypt, they stood in Tahrir Square to Hosni fell. Then Bahrain, Yemen, Libya, the fiefdom of Gaddafi, a man so blind he cannot see the writing on the wall. Now Syria, the ancient land of Damask and Zenobia, and Phoenicians who made the alphabet, the mother of all literature, and a home for early Christians and St. Paul, battered by crusaders, Turks, and French. Throngs of men and women marched the streets, many died. Into the mourners the dictator sent his guns to kill all those who dared oppose him, to shoot at women leaving homes for bread, imprisoned children for writing on the walls. 900 died. Doesn't have to be like this. We forget that all our blood's a shade of red and our poor planet needs no more liquid feed. Down with fanatics who would hijack the uprisings and give all good Muslims a bad name. Down with Pastor Jones and Koran Burning who gave Christianity the same. Let's return to the golden age in Spain when Christian, Jew, and Muslim lived as one, Quran was read in Latin, mass in Arabic, was heard the gentle strains of lute and castanet in Cordoba's cobbled streets. When Arab scholars kept alive the knowledge of the Greeks, without which the Renaissance could not shine. But Isabella ended that. Down with those who make enemies of East and West who manufacture guns and bombs to maim and kill. Down with inquisitions, down with tyrants, down with dictators everywhere, down with Gaddafi, down with Assad, Sunni, Shia, Alawite, unite, save Syria, inshallah. <laughs>